the spider morph, arguably one of the most popular and also most controversial snake morphs currently in the ball python hobby. In this video, I hope to give an explanation of the notorious head wobble and super fatals seen in spider ball pythons and take an in-depth look at the genetics behind these morphs. So the spider morph in ball pythons is a change in both pattern and coloration. The patterning along the dorsal side of the animal takes on a webbed type of pattern with thin strips of black running down a light brown to beige back color. As you go down the side of the animal, the color normally darkens and then sharply shifts into a white light beige as it leads into the ventral side of the snake. The eyes of spider ball pythons are normally lighter than the wild type morphs, and the head is normally blushed with a stereotypical Y pattern present on the roof of the head. The gene itself is incomplete dominant, which means that the resulting pattern is actually an intermediate between a super spider, also known as a pearl, and a normal. This is caused by haploinsufficiency, in which the gene responsible for creating the spider phenotype cannot produce enough proteins to complete the full dominant phenotype on its own, but can produce enough to change the normal appearance of the wild type ball python. Spider is part of an allelic series with several other morphs like Champagne, Woma, and Hidden Gene Woma. All of these morphs stem from different mutations on the same gene, which from now on will be collectively referred to as head wobble genes. Head wobble is a shaking of the head seen in all of the head wobble morphs. However, it is by far the most noticeable in the spider morph. One of the more interesting aspects of head wobble is that it only appears to occur during movement, and the snake is perfectly capable of remaining still, even if in odd, unnatural positions while doing so. The key to head wobble appears to be balance. It only seems to occur when the snake needs to balance and direct itself. Head wobble is most apparent during striking positioning and vertical motion, two times that balance would seem most important to the activity. Naturally, this kind of points towards an issue to the inner ear. It is important to remember that while snakes do not possess an outer ear, they do possess a fully functional inner ear used for balance. With this first clue in mind, let's see if we can develop this idea further into a possible explanation for the notorious head wobble. Before I get into this too heavily, I first want to explain what the intended targets are by breeders looking to create new morphs of snake. The specific genes that are targeted are genes which encode morphogens, which are molecules that dictate the pattern and formation of tissue development. Essentially, they are proteins whose presence or non-presence creates the outline for what the animal in totality will look like. Among these morphogens are a group of proteins called the bone morphogenetic proteins or are otherwise referred to as BMP, which are responsible for orchestrating tissue architecture throughout the body. There are currently 20 BMPs. However, today we will focus very closely on a certain one called BMP4. BMP4 is an evolutionarily conserved protein, meaning that it's found in most taxa and all vertebrates, and is responsible for the formation of tissues across the body. It is known to mediate several other morphogen pathways that create the stratification of the skin layers, like that of the WNT morphogen, which means that BMP4 plays an intimate role in the color and pattern of animals. Of even greater interest to our question, however, is the fact that BMP4 is responsible for the creation and function of the inner ear. When a group of researchers decided to test the role of BMP4 on inner ear function in mice, they found something extremely interesting. The mice, heterozygous for the BMP4 gene, circled. The researchers found that mice missing one of their BMP4 genes would circle while moving, regardless of the time of day, and different individuals would circle different amounts. This was attributed by the researchers to a lack of balance. And they also found that those mice missing one of their BMP4 genes had poor head stability in the yaw axis, or rather looking up and down. The other finding of the study was that homozygous BMP4 negative individuals died during fetal development. Now, for those of you who know the spider gene, this all sounds very familiar. Odd, unnatural movement and poor head stability associated with head wobble. And for those of you who do not know, Whenever you combine spider to spider to create super spiders, they nearly always die while still in the egg, and those of them that manage to hatch into the pearl ball python 
are almost always dead within the first few weeks. Owal reptiles, who managed to hatch out a super spider that died shortly after hatching, brought it to a vet and discovered that the spinal cord was underdeveloped, which is interesting because BMP4 is also partially responsible for spinal cord development. This is all very good evidence to suggest that a mutation in the BMP4 gene is what is giving us the spider ball python and all of its allelic sisters. Theoretically, the mutation could also be to one of BMP4's antagonists, like NOG, which would increase the rate or binding strength of the antagonist to thus cause a reduction in viable BMP4 accessible during development. For simplicity's sake, I will continue to say that it is a mutation to BMP4 itself. The important idea anyway is that through either mutation or suppression of BMP4, the inner ear of spider ball pythons does not function correctly and that in itself is the cause of head wobble. The reduction or mutation of BMP4 is also what causes the difference in color and pattern during development. Since the normal amount of BMP4 that is required to create the wild type phenotype is not present and thus you're going to see an incomplete dominance between a normal BMP4 protein and either a mutated or lacking BMP4 protein. The fact that the BMP4 gene causes a change in color, a change in pattern, and a change in the shape of the inner ear means that the gene is pleiotropic, or rather that the product of this single gene causes multiple effects. Another idea with head wobble that is discussed very frequently is that different individuals show different amounts of head wobble. This can be explained genetically through the idea of variable expressivity, which is essentially the idea that the same mutation in different individuals causes different outcomes. You can see this by simply holding up two ball pythons of the same morph next to each other. One might be slightly more faded or slightly brighter, or there might even be color differences between the two, even though they should be the exact same. Variable expressivity, however, shows that two individuals with the exact same phenotypic morph are almost definitely going to look slightly different from one another, even though their genes are the same. It is also discussed that line breeding the head wobble out of spider ball pythons is impossible. And just because you have two spider ball pythons with minimal head wobble, by breeding them together, you are not guaranteed a clutch of babies with minimal head wobble. And some of the babies could have significantly more severe head wobble than their parents. This is also an example of variable expressivity and confirms the genetic link that head wobble has with spider. You can never breed it out of the spider morph. There are two interesting gene combinations that I also want to discuss very briefly and try to give an answer behind what is actually happening. The first morph that I want to discuss is the blackhead morph, which happens to be allelic with spider, but does not show any head wobble symptoms. This is likely because the blackhead gene actually has the opposite effect on BMP4 and actually increases the amount of it as opposed to reduces it. Since you're producing more BMP4 as opposed to reducing it, it makes sense that you would get a fully functional and complete inner ear while also just getting a change in pattern. When bred together, the blackhead morph and the spider morph create a nearly normal looking ball python without head wobble. This is possible likely because the mutation that occurs on the BMP4 gene for blackhead morph is actually the polar opposite of what occurs for the spider morph, and instead of reducing the productivity of the protein, it instead increases it at a near similar rate to how much spider is reducing it. Thus, when they are combined, the previous shortcomings of too little BMP4 are corrected and the ball python develops at a normal rate similar to that of a wild type ball python. When this animal is then bred back to a normal, you will get 50% blackhead and 50% spider, thus proving that they are in fact allelic. The phantom gene is another example of a similar situation where a super phantom spider removes any trace of spider, but phantom spider retains visible spider characteristics. In this case, spider and phantom are not allelic, since super phantom would have already taken the place of both alleles. More likely than not, Phantom reduces an antagonist protein like NOG during development, which has a positive epistatic relationship with Spider. Essentially, by Super Phantom limiting the antagonist protein, it is allowing the limited BMP4 present in a heterozygote Spider to fully develop the snake normally 
like you would see in a wild type except with the additional characteristics of super phantom. When just normal heterozygote phantom is present, it doesn't seem to have this strong effect. In summary, my hypothesis for the spider morph and its head wobble, and that of all of the head wobble morphs, is that a mutation that occurred in the BMP4 gene creates the different patterns and colors associated with these morphs, but also inadvertently causes a functional reduction of the snake's inner ear. This inner ear change is what causes the head wobble seen in all of these morphs, and because of this linkage, head wobble will forever be a part of their lineage. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on the spider morph, and if you agree or disagree with my hypothesis. I'm always available to answer questions or have discussions, so feel free to let me know your thoughts. Thanks again.